Welcome back to the Farmer Johnson YouTube channel. Around home here, it's finally dry enough that we're able to get out in the field and get a little bit of field work done. Probably not planting because it's still March, but we are gonna get in the field today and knife a little bit of anhydrous. Um, we got two bars we're gonna be trying to run. I'm gonna be running one of them, and then my cousin's gonna be running the second one. So, I guess let's get started. Well, good morning, welcome back to another video. Today, uh, we're doing something a little bit different than what we've been doing. So we've been working in the shop on stuff today. We are actually going out to the field to run some stuff. Um, today is March the, I don't know where my phone's at, hold on. Today is March the 25th and we are headed out to knife some anhydrous and uh, do a little spraying, so it's exciting. Uh, I always feel like plant has begun whenever we start knifing, but in all reality, it could be another month before we start planting. I hope not. I really hope not. I hope it don't get wet on us, but yeah. So I'm I'm sitting in quad track number one or 620 number one. It's hooked up to this blue jet uh, 60 foot in hydrous bar. Back there on the other side of this planter. There's a 620 number two. It is also hooked up to a blue jet 60 foot in hydrous bar. So um, as long as everything goes to plan and there's no serious breakdowns, we should have a pretty decent day of knifing on some gas. Um, hopefully, hopefully get over a lot of ground. That's the goal. We will go ahead and reset our totals here. Um, starting out so I can make sure I'm putting on the right rate make sure that matches so So, we struggled a little bit this morning to get running. You know, it's one of them first day kind of things. The bar is pulling hard right now. Really hard. We're using 108% engine load. So, pulling really hard right now. But, like I was saying, uh, it was one of them first day kind of things. Uh, starting out, first thing, you know, you got to work the kinks out regardless of if you ran it last year or not. I don't know, it, n nothing ever goes perfectly, it seems like, when you're first starting out, but. Actually, this bar ran beautifully, first thing. Um, I really didn't have to do much to it. I hooked the tank up and it was ready to roll. The other bar, the other 60 foot bar, it's over there switching out tanks right now. But it had a um, O-ring that come apart in one of the towers. The towers is, I don't know if you can see them right there. I'll have to show you probably when I'm loading. But it's basically what the hoses off the tanks run into. And then you got like a bunch of different hoses coming out of that. They run it to each individual knife. But uh, the other bar had an O-ring that was blown in the tower and it was causing, um, it was causing not much gas to come through the hose, so. They got that fixed and the other bar's been rolling good. So, I mean, it's going. This would be my third tank of the day and he's right now hooking up to his third tank of the day. Um, yes, third tank of the day, I think. Yeah, we're both on our third tank of the day. So he's pulling a set of big doubles like I got here and a set of small doubles. So the smaller doubles, he's only able to get over like 30 acres or something like that. The big doubles, you're able to get over just right around 50. So we're cruising on. Earlier, my pressure was really low. See, we're not running a hydraulic pump on this one. So when the pressure in the tanks is really low, I got to drive way slower. But right now, the pressure is awesome. I'm able to run like 10 mile an hour, no problem. 
So it's always nice when you're able to run fast, get across more acres. And luckily we got a beautiful, beautiful wind coming through today. It is very terrible when the air is heavy and there's no wind and the gas doesn't move anywhere. It seems like you're always gassing yourself out, but it's been beautiful today. Haven't ran into any of that. Wind's always blowing, so I haven't like almost died more than at least three times today. So it's been a pretty good day. Big washout. So that other bar is right there. It looks like he just got hooked up to his small set of doubles. That bar is kind of run a little bit differently than this one. It's essentially the same exact bar, but one's a little bit newer than the other one. So his is run off of two ground drive pumps. So essentially it has two little wheels turning a pump in the back that pumps the anhydrous to every single row. This bar right here, it's technically supposed to be a hydraulic drive pump, but we can never get the hydraulic drive pump. It's a little white thing right there. We can never get it working right. We've had this bar for probably six, seven years, and we've only had the pump working right like half of one year. So it's not even worth messing with. But essentially how mine is getting run is off the pressure of the tank. The pressure on the tank is basically going to a valve or a yeah basically a valve that gets turned on and off off of this little foot pedal clicker on my floor so when i click this pedal it turns the valve which opens it up which sends gas to every single row when i click the pedal again it shuts the valve which shuts off the gas to every single row so the bars are same but different So in return, his bar, you can only run like eight mile an hour. But you could like, it doesn't matter how the temperature outside or anything. Eight mile an hour, that's it. This bar, when when the uh, it gets hot outside, the pressure rises in the tanks, which means I can run faster. In return, when it's cold outside, which today I wouldn't call it cold, but it's not warm, it's 67 degrees. So my pressure's not crazy awesome. It's around 50 PSI. So uh, right now I'm only able to run eight mile an hour. But on those really hot days, 80, 90 degree days, I can run as fast as this tractor could possibly pull that bar. But on the cold days, I'm down to five mile an hour. So the bars are the same, but they're different. Sprayer just pulled into the field with us. Um, I guess they just got him going. It kind of takes a while to get all the chemicals the first day on the trailer and the trailer ready to go. And then also, he unfolded his booms this morning and a piece broke on the boom. I don't know why, that's just what I was told. So, he done wadded up his sprayer this morning. They had to weld on the boom, which is kind of rare for a Patriot. But, they got that all fixed up and it looks like he is just starting to roll, so.
and just like that we got another farm done i don't know how many acres we've done today but um so the other bar is right there but if you look way over there where that big dust cloud is you go all the way to the dust cloud turn left and go all the way way down that way about i don't know a quarter of a mile half a mile somewhere in there our shops there and we've done from our shop all the way down to this road right here then all the way this way completely to the woods there so acres wise i have no idea how much that is and i don't know what kind of reference i just gave you guys but the camera makes it probably look like a lot of acres and that's what we're going for it was quite a long move um we had to go from that field right there to this field right here so quite a long move i barely made it anyways we're pulling we're pulling wing locks five perfect My grandpa always tells this story about when he was like my age, younger. Um, there was this local farmer that he really looked up to in the area. And uh, that guy was like the first one in our area that started knifing in hydras. And like the huge talk of the town at that point in time was like, you're gonna kill the earthworms, you're gonna kill the earthworms. And uh, anyways, the, uh, the guy my grandpa really looked up to said, you know what? I'm not growing earthworms. I'm growing corn. And I'm growing pretty damn good corn. I just, I just thought that was always funny. Anytime I'm knifing in hydras, I'm like, yeah. We're not growing earthworms. We're growing corn. And we're growing pretty damn good corn. So back in the day, we used to put like every acre of corn out we had within hydras. Like we knifed so much in hydras. We might only like side dress with 28, like one field. And uh, we quit doing that because we saw such a yield increase in our early plant soybeans. We kind of thought, you know, it's a no brainer. Um, we only have so much help and we only have so much time to get it done. So if we don't knife on as much in hydrous, we can get more beans planted early. So that's kind of the route we He's gonna try to get into the shop to get that wagon filled and get it out here one more time before it gets dark. Here's the goal. I don't know if him. Number one, I hit my mirror on a tree branch earlier and I was like, ah, I gotta adjust that back. But it works out really well for like a nice studio light at night. But anyways, I just got a phone call that I really, really, really did not want tonight. The other in Hydrus bar, it sounds like the pump is going bad or something like that because he got out to check his tank. One tank's at 50% and the other tank's at 10%. So that means everything he just knifed 
is not at the right rate. So, that means I gotta, he's, he's heading into the shop and uh, he's gonna park it. If it doesn't rain in the morning, I guess we'll be putting a new pump on it. I'm gonna go re-knife everything he just knifed because we don't want streaked up corn. Doing the old double back. I don't know how many passes he did here, um, but this tank, so, uh, but I, I don't, I, I think it was only a couple, like three or four, so. Not really doubling back over that much, but. This is what I was talking about. Tank pressure is only 37 PSI right now. It is, the, the pressure has dropped so low in the tanks, basically just because it's gotten dark and it's way colder out now than it was at four o'clock this afternoon. It was like 70 degrees at four o'clock, so. Right now, I don't know what the temperature is, but it's a lot colder than at four o'clock. So the pressure has dropped tremendously in the tank, which has caused me now to slow down to five and a half mile an hour. I went from driving 10 and a half to 11 mile an hour to just putting. And as you can see, the smoke is just hanging tonight. Not much wind, air is heavy, air is cold. The stuff's not moving. It doesn't have much pressure. We are driving slow. And a little bit of smoke is sneaking in the cab. It's, it's rough. The best way I can describe in hydrus, like inhaling it, is like, imagine breathing in like, just normally breathing in and not getting any oxygen. Like you're still just as short of breath and can't breathe as before you inhale. Like you don't breathe anything in. That's that's the best way I can describe it. And then that along with like a burning sensation. I don't know. I just heard a pop. But I don't see a broken breakout bolt, so we're going to keep rolling. I don't know. It's it's hard to explain for people that's never been around it. Fun fact. Years ago, I think they were making crystal meth with this stuff. Crackheads were like... They were able to make crystal meth or some kind of drug with anhydrous. And we went through a serious serious long phase of like people trying to steal anhydrous from it like it was a it, it was a big time deal like wild stuff um a lot of people that i heard about that died were actual crackheads trying to steal anhydrous they had no idea how to do how to do it um i've heard stories of crackheads trying to fill a five gallon bucket full of anhydrous and uh just all kinds of wild stuff so that's a fun fact for your night I don't think stealing in hydrus is as big of a thing as it used to be because I, I haven't heard of any crackheads um, becoming unalive from stealing it in a very long time. And I haven't heard of anyone really dealing with that anymore. So I think they found a much safer, better way to make their crystal meth. So good for them, right? Well... I have this video I talk about how dangerous anhydrous is and how you got to respect it and then I don't know I kind of had a close call tonight I mean not really but I was scared so one of these bleed off valves for my filters popped open spraying directly at the cab I couldn't breathe for a hot minute and I was freaking out but you know we stayed calm and got it taken care of. I didn't videotape the deal because I was saying some very choice words 
that probably don't need to go on my YouTube channel. But with that being said, I think we're gonna end it there. So I hope you guys like this video of the, the most dangerous way to grow a corn crop. <laughs>